It's the first of two massive games between these teams in the space of four days. When Celtic take on Hearts at Celtic Park in the Cinch Premiership. Welcome back guys to Fog Football. We are here to review, or preview should I say, Celtic. I wish I could review, I wish I had a magic ball and I could predict the scoreline. I wish I could read into the future, but unfortunately I can't. So we're going to have to settle for a preview and Celtic will be taking on Hearts, like I said, in the Cinch Premiership. It's Celtic versus Hearts tonight in the league on the 8th of March in and then on the weekend, it's Celtic's turn to travel to Hearts to take on them at Tynecastle in Edinburgh in the Scottish Cup. So it's two big games, two big venues and two big competitions. But the big question is, guys, who will be victorious in these games? Will Celtic do a double sweep over Hearts like they do most teams? Or can Hearts fight? and get a result in one of the games, or maybe even both. We've seen earlier in the season when Hearts took Celtic on at Ten Castle, what a game that was for me personally, that was match of the season, and I don't care what any Celtic fan says, Hearts didn't deserve to lose that game, I thought Hearts were the better team in that match, probably should have got the win, but we were a little bit unfortunate with the Taylor goal, and in the end, yeah, Celtic came away with the victory, but I felt like that scoreline wasn't fair, I think Hearts deserved to get the win, I think they at least deserved a draw, we didn't get it though, and if you don't get it, you have to keep trying, we will keep trying this week, when we take on Celtic twice, of course though, we're here to talk about the league fixture, and then closer to the weekend, we'll obviously talk about the massive fixtures in the quarterfinals of of the Scottish Cup, but in terms of the league, I mean, I think it's a bigger game for Hearts. Now, yes, Celtic are nine points clear. Since Michael Beale came in, Celtic have not been able to increase that gap. So if Celtic drop points before Rangers do, yeah, I don't think they'll be hitting the panic button, but, you know, doubts might start to creep in. People might go, well, Michael Beale's outscored Ange Postacoglu. He's outpointed Ange Postacoglu since he's been in charge of Rangers. But honestly, if Celtic did drop points in this game or if Celtic even lost this game and let's say Rangers beat Hibs and cut the gap down to six I'd still be confident that Celtic would see it and win the title I still think Celtic will go on and become champions by the end of the season as for Hearts though you know form hasn't been great let's be real the form has not been good over the past like month six weeks and all of a sudden we've went from being clear in third place. It looks like Ford was about to be, you know, sewn up. There was no danger. And now all of a sudden you've got Hibs who are in good form and they're creeping behind Hearts. So while Celtic might think they need to win this to maintain the gap there over, over Rangers, I feel like Hearts also need to win this to try and maintain that five point gap that they have over Hibernum. But obviously Celtic have got much better form. Celtic will be the favourites, especially being at home. I think you could play this game nine times out of ten and Celtic would win it. But here, maybe tonight will be that tenth time where Hearts get something out of the game. Now we move into the team news and Thankfully for Hearts, look, we start, Hearts started the season with, you think Rangers injury list is bad, Hearts started the season with a horrendous injury list, literally about 9 of the first starting 11 players were out injured, but since then, you know, they've began to get some players back, they strengthened in January, albeit I'm not exactly convinced the signings in January were great, but they did bring in numbers, and you know, Hearts are beginning, the, the squad's beginning to assemble its full strength. Now, now, of course, we're still missing Craig Gordon, uh, we're still missing Craig Halkett, two massive players for the Jambles, and it goes without saying that they will be big misses, but we let's be honest, Craig Gordon's been ruled it for a while, as is Craig Halkett, we know that those two are not going to be playing, and we've had to deal with them, you know, for the last while anyway, and I think Sander Clark's came in, and Sander Clark, you know, I think he's proved a lot of people wrong, and for me, when Hart signed him, I feud him as the second best goalkeeper in Scotland. Nothing has changed in my opinion. He's still the second best goalkeeper in Scotland. And on form, you know what? He, well, currently he's the best because Craig Gordon's injured. But on form, man, he 100% he should be the Scotland national goalkeeper. 
I find it strange when people are saying that we need to ask David Marshall to come out of retirement. Why would we want Marshall to come out of retirement when Sander Clark is currently playing week in, week out for hearts? And, you know, a lot of the games, he's winning man of the match. So, yeah, for me, Sander Clark has been great. But, you know, uh, Liam Boyce and Benjamin are both not going to be in the squad either. I think they have been training recently, but the game's just too soon for them, so I don't see them playing. Got Gary mckay Stephen as well, who is not going to be available. Uh, neither will Peter Haring or Stephen Humphrey. So, yeah, Hearts still have multiple injuries, but believe it or not, it's nowhere near as bad as it was come the start of the season. Now, if we look at Celtic, I mean, Celtic have been very fortunate, in my opinion, within, and that's not a dig at Celtic, but they have been fortunate with injuries this season. They haven't really gotten any. Maybe that's something to do with, I don't know, maybe that's something to do with the fitness at Celtic. Maybe they work on their fitness. Maybe their medical team's good. I do not know. But they have a pretty much a full strength team to choose for for this game, apart from James McCarthy. But let's be honest, James McCarthy wouldn't be getting anywhere near the team anyway. So is that even a loss for Celtic? No, it is not. Both teams, though, coming into this game with massive wins. Hearts' win over St. Johnston. 3 0 on paper looks good, but in reality, Hearts weren't that great in that game. And St. Johnston had enough chances, I feel, to get something out of it. So I think St. Johnston can definitely feel hard done by. Another team I feel can be hard done by is St. Mirren. When they took on Celtic, they were 1 0 up until obviously they went down to 10 men. We all know what happened after that. I mean, that's no fault of Celtics at the end of the day it was a red card I completely get that but you have to wonder what would have happened if St Mirren never went down to 10 men I know a lot of Celtic fans will say Celtic would have went on and won anyway but who knows that might not have happened man we've seen what happened earlier in Paisley when Celtic took on St Mirren they couldn't break them down and St Mirren came away with a 2-0 win who's to say St Mirren wouldn't have took points off Celtic if they kept 11 men against 11 but if we look now at the possible starting lineup for these two teams. Now we'll start with the home side Celtic. It's predicted they're going to go with Joe Hart and Nets, Alistair Johnston at right back, Carter Fickers, Starfelt, and Taylor. The completing the back four. Hatati, McGregor, O'Reilly in the midfield. And up front, Abada, Jota, and O. Now, I'm not too sure if that will be the lineup. However, Ange Postacoglu has said he will be making multiple changes for this game. So, I think it does make sense that we maybe see O'Reilly come in for Moy. I think Abada lately has been doing really good from the bench. He's been coming on. He's been looking good. So, I think Abada coming in for Maida makes sense. And then we have O, who I believe hasn't started a game for Celtic yet. If I'm wrong with that, then let me know. But I think Kyogo might be rested for the game against Hearts in the Scottish Cup and maybe O will be the one that starts up front when they take them on in the league. But anyway, let's move on to Hearts' possible starting lineup. It is likely to be Sander Clark and Nets. I can't really see anything other than that. Um, in defence, we're looking at probably Kingsley, Rowles, Hill, Smith and Cochrane. And then as we go forward, you're probably going to have Snodgrass, Grant, Shankland, Ginelli and Mackay. I feel like Ginelli with two goals against St. Johnson, he'll definitely be in there. Uh, Shankland will be in there. Barry Mackay will probably be in there. I don't think we'll see any room for likes of Alan Forrest. Snodgrass should start. I think if Snodgrass performs, Snodgrass at his best is an absolute game changer. So yeah, I do expect to see Snodgrass in there as well. And uh, yeah, that could probably be the Hearts starting 11. But we'll have to wait and see, obviously, till tomorrow or till later on tonight even, when the uh, managers pick their starting 11s. But we'll move on now to the prediction part of the video. What do I think the score is going to be? I mean, I've seen people ask if you could pick one victory this week in these two fixtures, and what would you pick? Would you pick to win the league game, or would you pick to win the Scottish Cup? For me, it's simple. I would pick to win the Scottish Cup. I think if you lose, I mean, if you if Hearts loses in the league, we can still get third. If you lose in the Scottish Cup, 
you can't win the Scottish Cup. You know, it's as simple as that. So, yeah, for me, I would take a win in the Scottish Cup. I would actually probably take a tanking in the league if it meant we could get even a narrow victory in the Scottish Cup. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I want or what I'm hoping for. If I have to pick what I think the score will be, I do think Celtic will win this one. I mean, I think we can give them a game, of course, but I just think Celtic will probably be too strong. Do I think it'll be close? I think it'll be close enough. I'm going to go... You know what? I'll, I'll go with a close 2-1 Celtic win. Maybe that's me being optimistic. Sounds strange being optimistic and hoping for a defeat, but yeah, no, I just think Celtic will be too strong. I think we could score. I do, I do think we could score, and I just hope that we can, you know, deny Celtic. I think even if we lose 2-1, I think the main thing here is that, you know, we're competitive and that Hearts give Celtic a game. And the last thing Hearts want is to lose 5-0, and then you're going in to the weekend, you're going into the Scottish Cup game absolutely demoralised. So, yeah, I think it's important that even if Hearts lose this game, it's important that they take it to Celtic and they show Celtic, you know, that they can deliver against them. We've already showed that earlier in the season, but we need to show it again ahead of the Scottish Cup game. For me, I know it's two big games, but I think the Scottish Cup game is up here, and compared to that, the, the league game is down here, let's be honest. For me, I'd rather win the Scottish Cup game every day of the week. But let me know, guys, what game you would rather win in the comments, and let me know you, what you think the scoreline prediction will be. I'm going to go 2-1 Celtic. That is it. We'll be back tomorrow for the review, and of course, until then, until next time, being Fog Football, thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and peace.